Hi, my name is Larry Newman. I'm an attorney. I'm located in Ithaca, New York. My practice focuses on two main areas, DWI defense and personal injury cases. So I'd like to talk to you about different strengths of beer, wine, and alcohol in DWI cases. Now, lately, I've had a lot of cases where people said, I don't know how my blood alcohol was two or three times the legal limit. It just doesn't make any sense because all I had was two, three, four beers. And then I start talking to them and I really get the details about number one, what type of alcohol are they drinking? What volume of alcohol were they drinking? And what was the time period of the alcohol that they were drinking? They need to at least look at those three factors to really see, was your blood alcohol level really that high? Could it have been that high? So I have within my house, I mean, this is the, the business I'm in. So uh, my sister-in-law bought us these great wine glasses. I'm gonna zoom in on it. So you can take a look. It has lines on the wine glass at the four ounce level, six ounce level, eight ounce level. Now, if I went to one of the local restaurants and they served me a four ounce glass of wine, I'd be angry, I'd be really PO'd. And I'd probably send it back and say, hey, come on, for 10 bucks or eight bucks or whatever, give me a full glass of wine. But a four ounce glass of wine is really a full glass of wine. In fact, three ounces of wine could be a full glass of wine, depending upon what the percentage of alcohol of the wine is. Is it a 12% wine? Is it a 14% wine? I mean, we have wines that are stronger nowadays. Generally speaking, nowadays, wine is stronger than it was 10, 15 years ago. And that's the other issue I want to bring up. Beer nowadays is no longer three or three and a half, four percent beer. We have beers that are super high percentages and they're not really beers. They're ales or they're lagers. They're all these different ones. And I've I brought back from uh, Canada all these all these really cool uh, beers. Uh, even though my son is under the age of 21, I sometimes let him have a beer with me. You know, we you're allowed in New York State, by the way, legally to uh, give your kids some alcohol socially, uh, not to abuse them or anything. But my father used to say, you know, there's nothing better on a hot day than a cold beer or with a burger and some french fries. So, but what you really have to understand is you have to look at what the volume of alcohol was. So if somebody's drinking a pint of one of these stronger alcohols that has eight or nine or 10 or more percent of alcohol, they might be having not just two beers, that might be four or five beers in one 16 ounce portion. And you also have to think about did I drink it within such a short period of time on an empty stomach? Because then your blood alcohol level is going to rise up really, really fast. And if you go in your car at that point, you're going to have a really high blood alcohol level. I mean, your body has to metabolize and assimilate alcohol. Alcohol to the body is a poison. It's a toxin. And your liver can only metabolize it based upon time. That's it. Not drinking coffee, not doing exercise or dancing. I mean, people tell me all these things. I sweat it a lot. Your body metabolizes alcohol approximately one drink or 0.015 or 0.02 per hour. That's it. It's not going to do more than that. You're going to rise that high and you're going to fall that high. So in theory, I guess for every hour that you're having a drink, you can sit around and not do anything and then your body should be able to metabolize it. But everybody's different. If you have any questions about your DWI case, please feel free to give me a call. This is what I do. I'd be more than happy to answer them.